My wife is a procrastinator with a proven track record of making us late to everything, which is exactly why I was giving her a hard time Thursday night. Do you have your cookies ready? Yeah. Do you have your bags all packed and like everything ready? Mm -hmm. So all you gotta do in the morning is fluff yourself and- Fluff my car and we're good to go. Sure? Yep. Almost guaranteed. I'll be out in the driveway blowing the horn for 15 minutes. And then you're gonna use that little, tick, 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 that clock timer that like when I'm late, you watch, you'll let them use this. So Friday morning, as I'm getting ready to leave for Kentucky, I hook the trailer to the dually, pull the trailer out front, and get all this ice scraped off the top of the trailer. I don't want to break anybody's windshield on the way down. I load up all the tools, and while I'm loading everything up, I forgot and left the dually door open and June jumps in and out a hundred times. Made a huge mess. I cleaned that up, and I was ready to leave, so I go in to check on Vicky. I find her on the back porch with about 500 Valentine's cookies that she's made and taken with us. So I help her load all this stuff in the dually. Ready. She claims she's ready, but her track record for being ready isn't too good. Usually I end up having to turn around and go back to the house and such was the case yet again. Now we're already running late and my temper's boiling by now. It's inevitable. It's a cell phone, a checkbook, her purse. If her butt wasn't attached to her, she'd leave it someplace. She goes in the house, back out to the car, back in the house. June even understands we're late. She's concerned. Finally, I call her phone a hundred times and she finally finds it. Now this time, I'm not coming back. I don't care what she forgets. So I head down to A1 to pick up a spare tire for the trailer that Mark got for me. What happened this morning? Mark could tell I was frustrated when I came in the store, so he comes out and tries to defuse the situation. Okay, last minute, I realized, oh, since June's going, I gotta pack food, I gotta find her ball, I gotta get some water bottles and bowls, okay. like all these things. <laughs> We're already late, and I've already listened to this list of excuses that she's had already two or three times. And I'm already aggravated as hell as we're headed down 23 behind Evil Knievel here. I went down and had new tires put on this dually just so I could be sure we'd have a nice smooth ride. Well, guess what? The trailer tires are either flat spotted or they're unbalanced. So it's making the truck shimmy and shake and rattle like a freaking sardine can all the way to the Ohio River. I'm mad as a hornet. I'm as grouchy as a bear with a sore ass and to make matters worse, I turned the volume down on my directions on the way down here while I'm fussing with Vicky, and I got off course. Now I'm backtracking down through the Ohio River Valley to get down into Kentucky, and that's gonna cost us some time. I'm trying to get to Gina's as quick as I can so that I can visit with everybody when I get down there and run the drone up in here to take some drone video. June Pup can tell I'm upset. She comes up and gives me some kisses to try and calm me down. It worked a little bit. As long as Vicky quits telling me all her excuses as to why we're gonna be late, that's all I care. So anyway, we finally make it down onto Arkansas Creek Road and we pull into Gina's just in time. I pull out the drone, I get it up in the air, I'm taking this really nice panoramic shot and run the daggone drone into a tree. So that's the end of the drone footage for a while. I went in, sat down with June Pup, and saw Gina and the girls, and they took us around and started showing us all the stuff they've gotten done and how they're making all of our shirts. I'm telling you right now, these girls have got this down to a science. They are very efficient. It's like a madhouse back there. I don't know how they do it, but they manage. While the girls are back there finishing up some of the orders, Gina brings Vicky up to the front office and starts going through all the mint green stuff. Oh my goodness. She's talking her into doing all kinds of stuff with these green shirts for a line of clothing just specifically tailored for Vicky. Even turd barrel shirts and bandanas. So I guess y'all can look forward to some of that stuff soon. So anyway, we invited everybody to come up to the front office to get some of these Valentine's cookies that Vicky made. Seriously. Take some for your mom too. Yeah, my mom, she ain't leaving. It's quitting time on Friday and everybody's ready to go home. 
So Vicky and Gina finish up some ideas that they were working on, and then it's time to start loading up boxes so everybody can go home and we can go get some dinner. Gina had so many boxes of merchandise sitting in there that I couldn't tell which ones were ours and which ones weren't. I was praying to God we didn't load up anybody else's stuff. I thought we've got to be loading up everybody else's stuff with the number of boxes there was. There was like 40 of them. We filled half the trailer full. Once we had all that stuff done, Vicky and I offered to take Gina and Dante up to Billy Ray's restaurant and get something to eat. So we all went up and had dinner before it was time to leave. Vicky and I went ahead and drove all the way home, got home around midnight, and then the next morning, it's time to get back to work. Me and Uncle Bucko have got a project we've got to get done. My other brother, Joe, has his Suburban sitting out back with a fuel pump out of it. We've got to get that thing in the shop, get it on the lift, and find out what's going on. So Jeremy and I go ahead and hook a strap to 64 and pull it outside with a John Deere. This is the first time it's been outside since we got it lettered, and it looks pretty good. Anyway, we go out back to battle the ice and try to get Joe's Suburban pulled up out of there and shoved in the garage. And as you can see, <laughs> we struggled a little bit getting that thing out of that ice out back. But one thing about me and Jeremy, our mom didn't raise no quitters. <laughs> we got that Suburban shoved in the garage, closed it up, and then I backed a merchandise trailer over in front of the other side of the shop, unhooked from it, so we can start unloading all those boxes of shirts and bringing them in to fold them. By the time I got that done, Jeremy already had the Suburban up on the lift, verified that the tank had a rust hole in it, and started dropping a tank, and Vicky started carrying shirts in and folding them. I have a bone to pick with you. What? How many times have you lost your wallet, your phone, your glasses, your red hat? Like on a weekly basis, you far outweigh. You lose so much more stuff than I ever, ever do. But you make a huge deal about it. You know why? Why? Because I'm not procrastinating. Everybody loses stuff. You just can't find it when it's time to leave. A little while later, Kenny and Harley show up on their way home from Tennessee. They had gone down to pick up a vehicle and were stopping by on their way back. I had special ordered some hoodies and t-shirts and work shirts for Kenny, Harley, and Jeremy and Gina had them in this one box marked special just for them. Kenny was pretty excited to see his new work shirts. They turned out really, really nice. We had so many boxes just from the first night of unpacking and sorting and folding shirts. I hauled them all out there with a front end loader and burned them in the fire pile. While Vicki and Harley got busy putting things away organizing and sorting things out and trying to figure out the best way to organize this madness. I call it clothing chaos. I think Kenny and Harley plan on being here yet again tomorrow to help us finish up unpacking the rest of these boxes, folding, sorting, and organizing so that we can start getting things shipped out as early as Monday of this week. We've got so much to do but we are so thankful for all the love and support that everyone has shown us. Although all this stuff looks really, really nice, it's just the tip of the iceberg of what's coming, according to Gina and Miss Vicky. All right, guys, so we're back here at the shop tonight. We're just about ready to go in for the night. Call it a day. Call it a day. <laughs> Kenny and Harley were here, of course, as you saw, and they helped us get started folding. And Kenny and I have carried all the boxes in, got them put away. I'll put the trailer away tomorrow. Uh, so I'm sure everybody's going to be asking, what do you got up your sleeve, Squirrely? So you might have saw, I was looking at mint green t-shirts. You were looking at mint green everything. everything. I know. So there's some stuff coming down the pike that will be uh, a C10 shirt. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, so on the back of it will be, um, my goal is to have my C10 
my grand dogs in I the I thought bed it was it. ours. Well, yeah, ours, okay. Our C10, our grand puppies in the bed of it, in a scene that'll be on the back of the shirt. And with the Old Man's Garage logo on the and back. And this is for the girls, right? The, this is a girly thing? Well, the mint green will be for girls, but I think I'm gonna offer it in gray for guys. Okay, well, and we'll see. And for kids, too. Yeah. And then what about these turd barrel shirts she's looking turd at? Turd barrel t-shirts. Turd barrel t-shirts. Yep. Uh, Gina was showing me they we can get them in, in mint green. We can get them in the navy. They can have that old man's garage logo. We can put sayings Are you on. serious? Oh, yeah. They can have all oh kinds of things. Oh, my God. Oh, and bandanas for around their neck. Yeah, I saw yep. that. She held one of those up. Yep. She's just got my mind going of all kinds of things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And then you were talking about something with Christmas ornaments. Yeah, Christmas ornaments, uh, Christmas mugs. Uh, oh yeah, she did say <laughs> coffee mugs. Yeah. She had some real, actually some really cool looking coffee mugs. Yeah, they look kind of vintage and uh, they could come in a set in like mint green for ladies or, or a navy blue for guys. I mean, they were pretty, they were pretty cool. So yeah, my mind was. I'm thinking down. that this is the worst thing I ever did was take you to <laughs> Kentucky with me. You nearly made us late. You made me crash my drone. I was in a hurry. Hold up, hold up. What? My little uh, misplacing my phone, which I found it. I had made the bed and it was under the comforter. So just one of those random things. But that only cost us about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, right? Go. But you turning down the volume on your GPS. Well, I can't listen to both of you squawk at the same time. <laughs> listen. That lady in my phone squawking, saying, turn here, do this, do no. that. And you're up there no. just yip, yip, yipping. No. He turned it down when we were ordering lunch at the drive through and didn't turn it back up. Oh. And then missed his exit. And he'll try to blame that on me as to why we didn't get there any earlier. But that little detour. The reason we were late to begin with is because you didn't want to get out of bed. Well, listen. True or false? Yeah, you were first in the shower. I was first out of bed and I said, get in the shower. And what did you do? I said, you go first. <laughs> So what are you thinking of your office out here, Squirrely Locks? It's pretty damn sweet. Kenny did a pretty... Ask me again. What are you thinking of your office there, Squirrely Locks? I love it. I think Kenny did a really nice job. Yes. Setting your table up and putting your under lights, your underglow lights or whatever the heck. Yeah, it lights up so I can see my shipping bags. So I can see what I'm grabbing. It's yeah, you perfect. can see what you're grabbing, all right. What? What else? I don't know, what else? I'm fixing my dump truck, does that make you happy? Yes. Does it really? Why does that make you happy? Because we still need a dump truck around here. We do need a dump truck around here. And we need here. to give your dad his dump truck back. Yeah. Be another day tomorrow of folding. And then I do plan to stop and watch the Super Bowl though, because <gasps> oh yeah, Super Bowl's Austin tomorrow night. Is a team from Ohio in the Super Bowl? What so, are you saying? Ohio's full of losers? No, but that's very. That's the way that came off. It's very rare. So well, well, well. I'll be watching the Super Bowl. I love. I always love to see who's singing the national anthem and the halftime and all the funny commercials and it'll be good. And maybe Ohio will win. That'd be cool. You don't even know what team it is. <laughs>